please be seated. Lord God, our lives are filled with sin. We forget our neighbor's needs and do not love you above all else. We need a savior. Help us to be ready for Jesus in our own hearts. O come, O come, Savior of the world. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. Amen. And we're going to hear about that living hope in our children's message. Coming to us on video from Rachel Captain. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. Ah. Hey! Good morning, church family. I hope you're doing well today. You've caught me. I am decorating our Christmas tree. I just love decorating our Christmas tree. It's become this kind of tradition in our home. Every year we put the Christmas tree up and we decorate it as a family. Kids, how about you? Do you have that tradition at home? Do you decorate the Christmas tree with your family? Do you love it? I know, it's one of my favorite things too. You know, tradition is something that we do again and again to remind us about something. For the church, we have something that we do every single Christmas. That's your tradition for Christmas. It is the Advent wreath. Every week we have people lighting the candle and we talk about the meanings of those different candles. That's a tradition that we have at, at church. You know, a tradition that we have here at our home is every Christmas we get our kids a book for Christmas. And once they open the book, we sit around and we read the book together and then we talk about the book. Do you want to see what book I got the kids this year? Shh, don't tell them. Okay. This is the book I got them. The Advent of Christmas. You know, it's a really good book. And, and actually, it talks about Advent, what we're going to be talking about at church for the next four weeks in Christmas Day. Wait a second. Would you like to hear this book? I would love to read it to you. Yeah? Okay. What I need you to do is go find a comfy, comfy spot and we'll get started. Here we go. The Advent of Christmas by Matt Mayer, illustrated by Marcy Toos. All is merry and all is bright. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Four weeks to slow down in the hustle and bustle. The advent of Christmas is here. To mark the passing of the time, a wreath of evergreen its leaves show us God's infinite love. What Christmas really means. Upon the wreath, five candles sit. Three purple, one pink, and one white. The purple for fasting, the pink for rejoicing, the white for a long Christmas night. First Sunday, first Sunday, is it Christmas already? Hold on, there's four weeks yet to come. 
more than Santa and presents, we're waiting for Jesus with hope for everyone. We light the second candle for peace and remember the prophets of old. Filled with God's glory, they start up our story. Prepare the way of the Lord. This third joyful Sunday is pink for a party. Galdete's a word for rejoice. Do not be afraid. His love is strong. Lift up your heart and your voice. The fourth week we hear of God's love for all in the favor and promise to be. When Gabriel spoke and Mary declared, let it be done unto me. Four weeks have passed. Now a white candle shines as bright as an evening star to lead the way for three wise kings who traveled from afar. And this is what all of the waiting is for, to lead us where Christmas begins. A tale of a family in Bethlehem with no room at the inn. Joseph and Mary had made their way there while she had a baby inside. They had no place to lay their heads, no home for their special child. Yet on that night, the Christ was born and wrapped in swaddling clothes. Our humble Savior was laid in a manger, a sign like the angel foretold. The shepherds came, the animals came, as angel choirs were singing, where love came down to make amends while the world was sleeping. Glory to God in the highest place. Hallelujah, our Savior is here. Merry Christmas to all from heaven to earth and to all a happy new year. Merry Christmas to all from heaven to earth and to all a happy new year. The end. I love that story. What about you guys? Did you like that story too? I love that they talked about all the candles that we're going to be talking about here at church. They, they talked about the candle of hope and peace and joy and love and the Christ candle, the candle of light. So come join us on our journey through Advent where we hear about all the precious gifts that Jesus' birth gave us here on earth. Now I got to get back to these. I hope you guys have a great Sunday and we'll see you later. <clears throat> Thank you for that wonderful message. Our Advent children's song is, uh, has a unique title. So you may know the song, I've Got Peace Like a River. Well, we added a verse so that we could sing about hope. So our first verse is, I've got hope like a hot spring. And uh, we ask, invite you to stand as we do actions together and sing these words about hope, peace, joy, and love. <laughs>
Good morning. We have two readings this morning from Genesis, the first book of the Bible. First of all, from chapter 15, the first six verses, and then from chapter 21, the first three verses. Before we read from God's word, let us ask for a blessing on the word and the light of his spirit. Gracious triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, we come here in the name of Jesus rejoicing at this Advent season that you came into the world, our Lord, and we thank you that this promise came to us so early in the history of the world, already in the time of Genesis, that you provide a special son, uh, not only to Abraham, but eventually a special son for all of us. We thank you for this word, Lord, and we pray your blessing on our pastor as he leads us into the word and the meaning of it for our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. So first, Genesis 15, the first six verses. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. And then a few pages later in chapter 21. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave him the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. So far the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy Advent Um, and and Happy New Year. Wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. As was mentioned before, today marks the first day of the Christian liturgical calendar. It is the first Sunday of the Christian calendar, and so turn to your neighbor and give him a wave. Happy New Year. Now, we probably all have things that we do um, during Advent, um, traditions, as Rachel said, that, that we have as you start Advent. In the United States, where I spent a lot of my time, Advent is usually the first Sunday after Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, and it's marked with the getting readiness that comes with Christmas, such as Black Friday, Christmas shopping. To some, like our family, it's that time when we put up that Christmas tree, and I'm sure a lot of you have done. To some, it marks the start of final exams and the ensuing sleepless nights one needs to endure to make it home for Christmas. And for some, it means that there is a mass rush to get all the corn off the fields and book as much time as you can in the dryer. And last but not least, it's the start of the official queuing in of Christmas carols in Sunday worship. However, I stand in front of you here, realizing that Advent in the year 2020 is not like the years of past, because something is different. Many of our traditions have had to change. We recognize that getting together with family is going to be very difficult with the way the numbers are heading. We realize that for many businesses, this time of the year is when they make that last push to get out of the red and into the black. 
But this year, that's not going to happen as businesses cannot function the way they would want to at this time of the year. It's not a surprise for many of us that Advent in 2020 is going to be different. Because Advent in 2020 will not feel like a countdown celebration towards Christmas. It may almost feel like a countdown of good riddance to the year 2020. Let's state the obvious. The year 2020 has been a rough year. We're all hoping that 2021 will be a little different. We wait in expectation, being cautiously optimistic that there will be good news come 2021. To some, it may be a return to normalcy, a time when we can shake another person's hand or embrace a fellow congregation member without thinking that we are a bad person that are breaking the health guidelines. To some, it may be a vaccine to COVID-19. To some, it may be going on a trip that had been planned with years in the making. We all are waiting for something to come. And that works really well with Advent because Advent actually simply means coming, the coming. What are we doing? What we are actually, and of course, if something is coming, what we're actually doing is waiting. If something is coming, our response to that coming is waiting, waiting for something to come. The church through the years have developed themes for these four Sundays, and this year we decided to focus on the four themes that are used by many churches around the world as themes for the Advent candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. And I find it very fitting that we start with hope, as it is probably something we need most at this moment. We see a wonderful story of this hope through the bookend reading of a story that was read for us by John. We all know of the context of the story that is being read. In Genesis 12, we see a swift change in the narrative of the book of Genesis, where the story focused away from the universal story and into a particular story. In particular, the story of Abraham. Abraham is called by God to leave his country, his family, his people, his parents, all the things that he knew, and migrate out into some place, he doesn't know where, but some place where God will show him. And in doing so, he will be blessed and forming a great nation with a great name and being the source of all the blessings of this earth. Now, those are wonderful and assuring words. And so what we hope from them on is that Abraham is living in hope, in hope that all those things that God had mentioned to him will come and is coming. And so in hope, what does Abraham do? Just like all of us, he starts to, starts with W, wait, thank you. He starts to wait. Now, it's not clear in Scripture how many years have passed since the promise God made in chapter 12 and now in Genesis chapter 15. But scholars argue that it was probably three years based on the sacrifice that Abraham makes later in the chapter in chapter 12. So Genesis 15, three years have passed. The vision of being blessed into a great nation and being a blessing to others are still ringing in Abram's mind. And God appears in a vision and tells Abram, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. You can guess that at this time, Abram has waited for three years for God to do what he had promised that he will do. Now, I don't fault him for being afraid. He wasn't getting any younger, and Sarah wasn't getting either, younger either. Scholars argue that in ancient times, blessing had a direct correlation with fertility. The biggest resource one could have at that time was human resource. So to be a great nation, to have a great name, it required having many, many offspring. So of course, with him not having child, Abram was afraid. He was waiting with hope that God was going to see his promise to fruition, but also afraid as nothing was really happening. And at present, here in 2020, we may feel the same way. 
we are waiting with hope and expectation that God is going to see his promise to fruition in us, with us. But we're also afraid of the current reality that surround us. We recognize that God promises his children that he will never forsake his children, that he will never forsake us, that he would give us, pre- that he would give us bread and not a stone, that he would give us fish and not a snake that he will give us everything that we need and even in abundance of our needs, yet it seems so far away. And so we hope, but we're also afraid. Now, our fears have a direct relation with how we understand hope because the Webster's Dictionary defines hope in the following ways. First, to cherish a desire with anticipation, to want something to happen or be true. The illustration that that the dictionary makes is hoping for a promotion, hoping for the best, or talks of second definition is to desire with expectation of obtainment or fulfillment. For example, I hope she remembers, or I hope to be invited. There's a direct task or direct thing that is involved. Now, I don't know about you, but I can relate directly to this. Because, um, you know, ever since a few years ago, Canada has kind of jumped on the Black Friday bandwagon. It's a great way for businesses to turn from the red into the black. And um, this weekend was one of those crazy weekends for a store not called Costco, but called Shoppers. And I have no relations with Shoppers, other than the fact that through my 11 years living in Canada, I had built up quite a big sum of Shoppers on Shoppers Points. And it helps if you live downtown because there's like five Shoppers in two minute radius. And if you have three kids, gotta buy diapers. Anyways, and so we had held on to this. We've never used it um, because we were looking, we were looking forward We had a desire with anticipation because we wanted something to happen, and what is that? We wanted an opportunity to use these points in the most stewardly way, and this weekend, shoppers came out with a promotion that if you claimed $250 in points, they will give you an extra $150. Now, that's a 66% bonus. Now, for a Korean, that's pretty good. I don't know about you guys. So my desire with anticipation that Gloria and I have waited for 11 years had come true. Now, the second explanation of hope is this, to desire with expectation of obtainment or fulfillment. I hope Justin doesn't hear this, but we'd promised a video game machine. And what better way than to spend these points on this. The problem is we didn't know which store had them in stock or even if they will have them in stock. You've probably all heard of, watched on the news where Americans will like line up right after Thanksgiving dinner and the line goes crazy. Even this year, people will line up out the doors. And so I had an expectation of obtainment or fulfillment. What is that? It's to purchase this video game machine using my first hope of anticipating that extra points. And so on Friday, I told Gloria, we're gonna drive the kids to the bus stop and once they're in the bus, we're just gonna zoom over to the closest shoppers and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna hope, we are going to hope with anticipation with an expectation of obtaining this device. And we drove, following the speed limit, down Ann Street to the shoppers here close by church. There was no lineup. We went in. I told Gloria to get out first. Go inside and line up. And lo and behold, we actually picked up the last remaining device they had in the store. And it was 8.09. So nine minutes after the shop opened. We all have a story similar to this, where we 
hope for something <clears throat> where both sides of the definition actually work. We, we, we hope in something great happening and then we have a direct anticipation of something that we can grab. Now, it states on a hope, though, that is centered on me. A hope that is centered on us. A hope that is centered on our understanding. I wanted to use those points in the most profitable way. I wanted to buy that video game machine so that I could become a good parent to Justin. I'm not necessarily saying that that is becoming a good parent, but at least it gives the image, or at least it satisfies him. <clears throat> Maybe this is a good water break. <clears throat> it is obtaining, it is fulfilling. Now, doesn't that sound like a description of the 10 steps to becoming a successful person or 10 steps to succeed in optimism? I mentioned earlier in the summer the danger in looking at hope through the lens of optimism because in doing so, we feel that there is something that we can achieve in our own accord. By thinking positively, we can achieve a positive result. We confess, in God we trust, but we trust in ourselves. We applaud people who say things like, bet on yourself and pull it off. And I'm in no way criticizing people who work hard and strive for excellence because I worked hard for what I did on Friday. I'm not saying anything against people who work hard and strive for excellence because that is not only a virtue, but that is a God-given command to be good stewards of God's kingdom. <clears throat> but the danger lies when we become the author and perfecter of our faith and our hope. Let me say that again. But the danger lies when we become the author and the perfecter of our faith and our hope. Abram tried to put God's hope and become the author of God's promise to him. <clears throat> what he did not know is that God was working. <clears throat> what Abram had forgotten was to wait with hope. What Abram forgot was that it was the advent of God's hope. Hope is coming. Hope is coming. In fact, it's the entire history of Israel where God continues to remind God's people to wait with hope. God asks his people to wait and trust, to trust and see that the Lord is good, to trust and see that the Lord is good. And it's actually fitting because that's the last definition of hope that Webster's Dictionary speaks of, to expect something with confidence. Brackets, trust. Ooh, trust. God is asking Abram to trust in him. God is asking the Israelites to trust in him. <coughs> God is asking me to trust in him. God is asking the people who are walking in the darkness to trust in him. It may have taken 30 years from Abram and Sarai to bear a son and start the physical manifestations of God's blessing to them. But in trusting God, although there were a few turns on the road, Abram not only becomes Abraham, Abram not only bears a son that becomes the first offspring of the many that will outnumber the stars, but most importantly, it becomes credited to him as walking with God, as being righteous with God, something I'm sure we all aspire to do. Roughly 170 years ago, in a small town in the south, south of France, lived a poet by the name, I don't know how a Frenchman would say it, but Placide Capau, that's the best I can do, who wrote a poem that's translated in English called Midnight Christians. Midnight Christians. Now, some of you are nodding your heads because this later on gets a melody added onto it, and it becomes translated actually by a Unitarian pastor. Look at that. And it comes to us as O Holy Night. O Holy Night. I know it's a Christmas carol, so we don't sing. 
But in the first verse of this very, very famous and very popular and beloved Christmas carol, there is a phrase, a thrill of hope. A thrill of hope. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. The text tells us that the world was waiting, longing, pining for something. As it said, mirrored in sin and error, perhaps that is something we can all relate to. We may feel that life is off, tra off track when we feel that we're going in the wrong direction, when we are living not according to God's accord, but on our own accord, or struggling through a global pandemic, or in a deadlock of political ideologies. The thing is, we may not relish where we are right now. We are hoping, we are longing, we are pining for some way to get us out of our current pit. In fact, it is not just us, but as the carol points out, the whole world is waiting on something that will take us out of this pit that we are in. As this carol kindly reminds us that there is a thrill of hope, a thrill of hope. The hope that God will make all things new. Just as Abraham thrilled with hope of what God had promised to them, just as the Israelites thrilled with hope of a Messiah, we continue to thrill with hope of what God will do to us and with us. Even at this time when the world is groaning, we continue to thrill in hope because we celebrate God's love towards us in Jesus Christ and his promise that he will return again, that he will reign again. We are thrilled with hope because our hope does not lie in picking up some gaming machine at shoppers, but our hope lies in Jesus Christ, our living hope. So even if things might be a little different this year, even though we may have to keep our masks on, and even though, as someone mentioned, this is the worst year ever, we continue on, thrilled in hope. But doesn't that sound a bit hard? But doesn't that sound a bit empty to you? Simply to be thrilled in hope. Because it's hard to cling on to hope. It was hard for Abram. So God continues to give us small graces, small, small graces, to remind us of our eternal hope. And there's two things that I want to dwell on as I finish. First, <clears throat> God reminds us of our eternal hope through the physical signs of grace in the sacraments, through the baptism and through the Lord's Supper. Although the bread and the cup, they do look very different these days. They are physical reminders of our hope to dine with our living, to dine with our living hope soon and very soon. Every time we come to the table to share this meal, we are reminded of God's love and the promise. And as a church, we do this monthly. And second, it is community. We are a community of grace. Look around you. We come from different walks of life, from different traditions and backgrounds. And yet we are united in the love of Jesus Christ. And by being in community, we become a manifestation of hope in Jesus Christ. Without that hope, what is the purpose of striving to meet during these difficult times? It is Jesus Christ, our living hope, that unites us. And in this community, we not only have people, but we have stories that speak to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. This Advent, we decided 
that we wanted to share this Advent wreath with everyone in the church, not only to have a wonderful Christmas centerpiece, and thank you to everyone who has sent it because they're just amazing. But more importantly, it's an opportunity to unite together as a family, to share God's stories of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love as you light those candles. We also hoped that you can continue to share those stories with people around you. This morning, we want to put that into practice as we get the privilege to experience hope in both tangible ways. One, through the Lord's Supper, but second, through hearing a story from within our community. Experiencing hope in both tangible ways this morning, we can be reminded that even in the direst times, we can continue to rely on the hope of Jesus Christ and say amen to God's words of comfort. Do not be afraid. I'd like to take this time to thank in advance um, all the worship committee who's helped put this together, and I'd like to ask um, our dear member of our community, Dick Romp, to come and share his story of God's hope, living hope inside him. Good morning. The hope that I have in my life, and I'm sharing my story, but I could also share our story as Nell and I, is very much summed up in Psalm 139. In verse 1 it says, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. In verse 13 it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And 16, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. This psalm sums up how awesome and faithful God is. During my first 19, 20 years or so of life, I knew there was a God but it did not influence my life at all, neither at my home or where I grew up. We had a good life, we were quite happy, and who needs a God when you are happy like that? But God had not forgotten me. From him I received a gift of music. And I had an eagerness to learn. There was no money in the family to pay for lessons. So I did it. I thought all myself. But looking back, you see that it is all God. He had other plans. Music was the Lord's way of getting me out of that milieu and getting me to Canada. I joined the Canadian Army as a musician and I was transferred to my home base in Camp Borden. There were some Dutch people in the band and they invited me to come to the church on St. Vincent Street. There are a lot of Dutch people there, they said, you know. And they will invite us after church and we'll have coffee and cake and soup, Dutch soup and buns. Oh, that sounded pretty good to me. So we went to church with these guys. I went to church with these guys and, and I joined the soccer team at the church and met Vic Teamstra. 
So he invited me to his parents on the 9th of Innisfil, and, and this was a Christian family. It, it, they, they came together, they read the Bible, and they prayed together. They went to church every Sunday, twice they went to church every Sunday. But looking back, I can clearly see the Spirit of God leading me. Many of the older members here would remember Domine van der Meer. We didn't call him pastor, it was Domine van der Meer. And he had a big influence on me. He showed in a gentle way, and, and in a gentle and understanding way, the love of God because I had a very difficult time getting used to the disciplined style of that early immigrant church. I, I had been a free guy for, for, since 16 years old, you know, do what I wanted to do. And, and, but finally, I, took, I wanted to know, and I took some catechism classes. I started reading the Bible, and after about two years, I made confession of faith in this, in this church on St. Vincent Street. And I must say that my early experience of faith was very much works-oriented. Earn my salvation. I got to be good. I also re realized that I needed a strong Christian partner because I was not strong in my faith at all yet. So that took a lot of per uh, persistent prayer And God heard my prayer and gave me Nell. Oh, soon after we got together, we got engaged. The army band I played in was posted to Germany for two years. Man, that was a long time to be away from Nell. But after two years, when I came back to Canada, I left the army and we got married, had children. I studied served on church council and school boards, and etc. Works, works, works. And there was always something missing. That close connection, intimate connection with Jesus. Danielle and I read a little booklet by Chuck Swindle, maybe some of you know it, The Grace Awakening. The Holy Spirit opened my eyes and heart by grace only. I did not or could not earn my salvation. It's a free, a free gift. That's what was missing. By grace only through Jesus Christ. During my studies at work, or when I was looking for work, God continued to show me the way, and some of the ways God showed were simply amazing. Life was good. Then tragedy hit. A phone call at work. An accident on our boy's job site. Come to the hospital in Orangeville. So we heard it from Aurelia to Orangeville. And there, there we learned that our 19-year-old son was electrocuted and the Lord had called him home. By God's grace and his love, and that was shown through our children and the church family and friends. We were comforted. <laughs> the Holy Spirit living in us brought us closer to Jesus and to each other as family and church family. We would wake up many mornings with a praise song or a hymn in our hearts and minds despite our deep sorrow. 
and in many other ways. The, the Lord revealed himself to us and confirmed his presence in our life. We had and we still have other difficulties in our life, but the Lord has promised never to leave us or forsake us. My grace is sufficient for you, Jesus says. That is a gift from God, and that is our hope. To the triune God belongs all glory and honor and praise. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good reminder that, um, that our hope doesn't lie on the things of this world, that the things that, that we trust are not necessarily the things of this world, but God continues to remind us that um, God is greater and that there is a hope that is greater than, than buns and wonderful Dutch soups. Although that would be really lovely these days. But that our hope lies in Jesus Christ, our living hope. And that there's nothing that can take us away from that wonderful hope in Jesus Christ. Let us stand as we sing.
needed. So again, um, if you have not received a small um, cup, the elements, if you can just raise your hand and one of the ushers will bring it for you. Brothers and sisters, hope comes from God's covenant with us. So come. Come. Come as you are to this communion in hope. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of of grace and truth. The Lord be with you, also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is fitting for us to give thanks. It is right and fitting our joy and our salvation that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, almighty, everlasting God through Christ our Lord, who existed before the world was called into being, but came down to save us, being born of Mary the Virgin, lying in a crib, walking on earth as one of us, who became poor, that by his poverty we might become rich, who was humbled that we might be exalted, who gave us peace and joy when we were without hope and without God. Therefore, with the whole company of saints in heaven and on earth, we proclaim and we celebrate the birth of our Savior and we sing with joy. thanks to God that our Savior Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us these earthly signs of his life and continuing presence among us until he comes again. For on the night of his arrest, he took bread and he gave thanks to God. Then he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you do drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Your incarnation, O Christ, we celebrate. Your death, we proclaim. Your resurrection, we declare. Your coming, we await. Glory be to you, O Lord. Creator God, be present with your life-giving word and Holy Spirit that we and your entire church may be called out and made hold through this supper. Grant that all who share the communion of the body and blood of your Son may be united in him. And may we all remain faithful in love and hope that until we feast joy, joyfully with Christ at the coming of his kingdom. Now as our Savior has taught us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
congregation of Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared this table for all who love him and trust in him for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him, are now invited to come to the table with gladness. Come then, all is ready. The gifts of God for the people of God. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, the bread which we break is a communion of the body of Jesus Christ. So take, eat, remember, and believe that the precious body of our Lord Jesus Christ was broken for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks is a communion of the blood of Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, take, eat, remember and believe that the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was broken, was shed for all of our sins. pray. With hearts eager to receive your gifts of life, we thank you, Father, for making Christ known to us in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. Now, may this meal enable us to increase in faith, persevere in hope, and grow in love. May this witness to Christ's death draw others into fellowship with him so that all your children will be gathered in to share with us the joy of your salvation. zeal for your coming kingdom, our voices confessing the name of Jesus, our Lord and our God. By thy First offering this morning is for the ministries of this congregation, and our second offering is for Timothy Christian School. Let us come to God in prayer. God, we come to you as people who are waiting, waiting for something that is coming. God, during this time, which often is festive, 
oftentimes when we celebrate, oftentimes when we come together as family, as friends, to remember, to share our stories and to share a meal. God, we realize that that's not happening right now. But God, we don't give up hope because hope doesn't derive from us. But it's in our longing and our yearning and our looking forward into you and all that you have given us. We see through the history, we see through the narrative, God's narrative of how you continue to show yourself to us in tangible ways. You continue to remind us that our hope doesn't lie in the things of this world, but our hope lies in the things of your kingdom. And so, God, we're grateful that this is something that we cannot control. But, God, this is something that we wish to join in. God, we wish to join in the wonderful ministry of sharing that hope to this world that needs to hear a message of hope. God, we long to be your hands and feet to this world which needs your hands and feet of love. And so, God, we ask that you continue to inspire us and empower us through your word, through the continued feasting that you give us through the bread and the cup, and the continued ministry and the communion of saints that we have here in this faith community and the broader faith community. God, we come to you realizing that even in the midst of our current pandemic situation, that we come with thanksgiving to you for the many blessings that you continue to give us. God, we give you thanks. God, we give you thanks that in the midst of our situation, you gather us here, you give us a place to worship, you put a shelter over our heads. God, we thank you that you continue to empower people who are working in the front lines to continue in the work that they have been giving, to continue in the vocation that you have called them into, and to continue to be a light where they are called. God, we pray for the police officers, the first responders, the people who are working in essential businesses, the people who are currently on the roads. God, we pray for a little bit more of your grace to be with them at this time. God, I look around in our congregation and we see a congregation that continues and yearns to grow in love for you and our neighbors. So God, we come to you with our prayers and petitions. We especially remember those who are homebound. This week, we remember Alma van der Kooi, Ann Vector, and Trudy Boss. God, we ask that your particular grace be with them. We pray for those who are currently suffering from illness or disease, or those who are recovering from illness and cancer. We pray for Everett, for Ninka, for Gerda. We pray for Jane, for Andy as he supports, for Lynn and Tom, for Sieb. We also lift up the names of many who are within the deepest parts of our hearts that we continue to pray for, and we lift them up by name. God, we ask that your warm embrace be with all the names that have been mentioned. God, we also give you thanks for for many who are expecting news. God, we read in the story in Genesis of how Abram and Sarai waited 30 years for that birth of their son. And God, we celebrate, just as they celebrated, the many babies that you've gifted us in in our community. And we also pray for um, the continuing healthy pregnancies for the Valkenbergs as they anticipate their birth of their little one this year, this month. We also pray for many who are currently continuing with their healthy pregnancies that are not on our bulletins and not on our lists. 
but we lift them up and we lift them up to your care. God, will you be with them, be with the families as they start new families, as they continue to celebrate the wonderful gift of life that you give them. God, we pray at this time for the Hoving family. God, we pray that your extra measure of grace be with them. We realize that the funeral has happened and we know that there are a lot of people who are there to remember them, especially remember Mark. But we ask that you continue to be with the family as they mourn and as they groan and as they continue to ask questions and as they ask why. God, will you show yourself to them as the living hope of this world? God, we start this Advent here in 2020. And God, we, we, we lift all of our concerns and all of our praise and all of our petitions up to you. God, we look forward to how you will continue to work and show us your hope, peace, joy, and love. God, continue to stir within us a heart to live in hope, in peace, in joy, and in love. God, this week we come together as a congregation to have a congregational meeting. God, we ask that um, we thank you for for the council members who have worked diligently to, to put together an agenda. God, I pray that you give us wisdom as we deliberate and as we vote. God, we pray that you be with, with us, that it's not just a meeting to approve the budget, but it is a time to, to look back and to, to recall the wonderful grace that you have given us and showered us with. God, we continue to pray for the many ministries that are happening around in the city, especially the Busby Center. God, as the weather gets colder, we realize that there are so many people with need who don't have a shelter. God, allow us to, to remember them and to support them, to support the people who are in need. God, I pray for the many congregations here in the city of Barrie, our congregation, Covenant, and all the other congregations of different denominations. God, I pray that we can continue to be salt and light of the world, that we can continue to be a reflector of your light to this city and to this province and to this world. Use us. Allow us to reflect your light. We ask this in all of our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. This week, um, I had the opportunity as a parent um, to attend uh, the annual meeting of Timothy Christian School. It was great to see a lot of the familiar faces there, but one thing that I was very impressed with was that the meeting was done in 55 minutes. I hope that we can break that record uh, this Wednesday, um, but if you do have any questions, please email them either to the office at office at first CRC Barry, or you can contact your elder. Um, or you can contact me or, or NO with any questions that you may have. Um, two things I wanted to share. Um, first is that after each service, Sunday service, um, we have someone who is waiting to pray uh, with you and for you. And this week we have Greg Van Royen, and his contact will come up on the screen after the service. He'll be there for 30 minutes. If you feel that God is speaking to you, or if you feel that the Holy Spirit's moving in some way, do not hesitate. Uh, we would love to pray with you, pray for you. And second, <clears throat> Dick talked about the wonderful opportunity of Dutch food and all of that and worshiping two times on Sunday. And this is that wonderful Sunday when we can worship two times. So I encourage you to come at 7 p.m., at 7 p.m. this evening as we continue on with our Advent tradition with the Advent Candlelight Even Song at 7 p.m. Don't miss it. We won't have a choir, but there will be awesome singing, awesome reading, and awesome praying. 
And so let us continue to join together and wait in hope as we sing together. Soon and very soon, we are going to sing the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing with hope. Let us stand. sisters of Jesus Christ, let us step forward in hope, in the living hope. God has yet to fail us. It may take a little bit of time. It may not happen in our own time. But soon and very soon, God will make all things new. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Soon.